Good afternoon, it's Chris Potter. Today I have a new presentation for you that I'd like to share. Brown Dwarf Star System in the Inner Solar System, The Evidence, Part 4, A Physicist's Thoughts, dated March 18, 2017. Let us begin. The series of articles I have written and answer to questions sent to me regarding the various images used throughout the articles. I have analyzed these images at people's request and have written my thoughts on it. In this fourth part, I try to put all the thoughts I have expressed and an answer to these questions together. I would also like to thank all the people who send me very interesting questions for me to think about. In the article entitled, Brown Dwarf Star Traverses the Sun from March 17, 2017, I clearly show that the object which traverses the sun on February 25, 2007 is nearly twice the size of Jupiter and is a brown dwarf star. Figure 1 below shows a close-up view of this object from a Stereo B Core 2 image. The image is from February 20, 2007, at which time the object was approaching the sun. The object is dark and therefore does not emit any visible light. But the cloud surrounding the object is emitting light and looks pink on the object's right-hand side. Now, this suggests that the cloud surrounding the object is ionized gas. And that light emission comes from plasma discharges across the cloud. A dark object of this size surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas has to be a brown dwarf star. Since the object is clearly a brown dwarf star, I will call it BDISS200701, where BDISS stands for Brown Dwarf Inner Solar System, comma 2007, to the year in which it was first observed in the inner solar system and 01, excuse me, let's do this again. Since this object is clearly a brown dwarf star, I will call it BDISS 2701, where BDISS stands for Brown Dwarf Inner Solar System, comma 2007, which refers to the year in which it was first observed in the inner solar system and quote unquote zero one refers to it being the first clearly identified brown dwarf star in the inner solar system figure one close up of brown dwarf star bdiss 2701 and a core 2b image from february 20th 2007 at 903 showing that it is a dark object surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas. Plasma discharges in this cloud lead to light emission from the cloud of ionized gas surrounding the star. Now, after making its loop around the sun, it makes a pass. Let's try that again. After making its loop around the sun and making its pass through the sun's corona, the brown dwarf star moves away from the sun and appears in the HI1-B visible light images on February 27th, 2007. The brown dwarf star's appearance and motion is detailed in figure two below. Figure 2, HI1-B images provided by Sechi from February 27th at 1801 and February 28th, 2007 at 1201, 1601, and 1801. Now the brown dwarf star that traverses the sun on February 25th, 2007 is indicated by a red arrow. A green arrow indicates another potential or possible brown dwarf star in these images. 
figure three. Figure three. Close-up view of the sun traversing brown dwarf star in HI1-B images provided by Sechi from February 27, 2007 at 1801 and February 28, 2007 at 1201, 1601, and 1801. Figure three above shows close-up views of the sun traversing brown dwarf star in each of the four images in figure two. The object looks smaller in the HI1-B images than in the core two images, which should make it more difficult to discern the cloud of ionized gas around it. Now, nevertheless, the four close-up images shown in figure three below clearly show that the object is surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas and that some of that cloud is emitting light on one side of the object, which is most probably due to plasma discharges across the cloud. In the first image in figure three, the object seems to be facing the camera with the surrounding cloud close to the star's surface, having a ring type structure. Notice that the cloud of ionized gas gets increasingly brighter as the object moves further and further away from the sun. This is possible that it's an indication that it goes into like an energy absorbing mode when it's close to the sun. But as it moves away from the sun, it starts emitting energy, which manifests as plasma discharges across that cloud of ionized gas. Now the energy it absorbs is probably electrical, potential energy or charge. Like what happens to a capacitor when it is charged this increase in its charge will increase the star's electrical potential. Thus, each time this star passes close to the sun, it increases its potential and the sun's potential is increased as well. This is also likely to be the reason why our sun is getting weaker and less bright as time goes on. Figure four, close up image of the object indicated by a green arrow. In the second image of figure two, the object seems to be dark and surrounded by a cloud of gas and therefore very likely to be yet another brown dwarf star. Let's go back to that figure two real quick. Ah, it's a close up of this little guy. Right here. Now figure four shows a close up view of this object at the bottom of the second image shown in figure two. The object is also surrounded by a ring type structure, which looks like it is made of gas. The object's center looks dark and the cloud surrounding it is lighter in color. This is also some gas that's actually in front of that dark object. This therefore seems to be a second brown dwarf star. In these images, it looks larger than the sun traversing brown dwarf star, which means that it cannot be very far from it. In other words, the object has to be in our solar system or inner solar system as well. I will therefore refer to the second brown dwarf star as BDISS 2702. Okay, figure five, HI1-B image from March 1st, 2007 at 133. Those red arrows indicate the two objects that we now know are brown dwarfs. The objects indicated by a yellow arrow at the top of the image, although light blue in the center, also have a dark ring around the central bright area and that seems to be surrounded by a cloud of lighter colored gas. The orange arrow points to the brightest objects in the image. The green arrow points to the transparent artificial device and the purple arrow points to the oval shaped object which is behind the transparent object. Close up view of this object indicated by a yellow arrow is shown in figure six below. The object seems to have a light colored interior surrounded by a dark ring, which is in turn surrounded by lighter colored material. 
The light colored central area may therefore be ionized gas in front of a dark brown dwarf star. This is a very similar structure to the brown dwarf star at the bottom of the image and indicated by a red arrow, so the object is likely to be a brown dwarf star as well. So in other words, we potentially have three brown dwarf stars in close proximity to our sun and thus in our inner solar system. Figure six, a close up view of that object at the top of the image in figure five. and it's indicated by a yellow arrow. The object looks like a brown dwarf star as it has a dark interior and it's surrounded by a light colored cloud made of what actually seems to be gas. The lighter colored area in the center is probably ionized gas and in front of the brown dwarf star. The bright object in figure five indicated by the orange arrow is the object labeled Venus in part one of the series the object has plasma ejections in the form of plasma loops as shown in the image on the right hand side of figure seven below. These plasma loops indicate that the object, that the bright object rather is a star with a very large magnetic field for its size. The image on the right in figure seven shows a lens flare of this star. So we know what it actually looks like. Notice that it's not spherical, but oval shaped and its axis is tilted by 20 degrees. Figure 7, HI1-A visible light images provided by Sechi from March 23rd, 2011 at 329 on the left and on the right from March 21st at 329. In part 2 of this series, I also showed that the star in figure 7 seems to have a rotational period of about 27 hours, which is very fast for a star. The fact that the star is much smaller than the sun and has such a large magnetic field for its size and also for its very fast rotational period suggests that it's a very dense star and therefore an old star. Stars become denser as they age because they have fusion reactions in their atmospheres which produce increasingly denser elements and then sink into the star's core. Thus, a star's core increases in density as the star ages. When that star runs out of fuel, it is expected to release its outer layers of gas and the dense core becomes a brown dwarf star, which does not emit visible light. And it is surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas. The bright blue color around the star may indicate a cloud of gas around it, but the images do not provide enough detail to know that for sure. If the cloud of ionized gas is there, the star is almost certainly a brown dwarf star. But if it's not, there are two possibilities. The star is just a very small, strange star that has never gone through the brown dwarf stage, yet it's very close, or it could be a star that was a dark brown dwarf star. But when it entered our solar system and gained enough energy to start emitting light again, and it actually started burning or blowing away with its solar wind, all of that ionized gas that was surrounding it when it arrived. Now, it is likely that a brown dwarf star will be able to restart its fusion reactions on its surface once it gets some energy in the form of electrical potential energy and fuel from a neighboring star like our sun. The preferred fuel is, of course, protons, which our sun is still plenty full of. It is therefore likely that the star has been near our sun for long enough to have gained enough protons to restart fusion reactions on its surface and thus become visible. When such a star is first able to start producing visible light, it is likely that that first light it produces is a low energy red light, but that as time goes on, it is able to absorb more energy and fuel from the sun that the light it emits and it will become both brighter and of a higher energy, yellow light, is higher in energy than red light. So the star may change from looking red to looking yellow as it gains energy and fuel. Thus, the energy and color of a brown dwarf star is an indication of how long it has been in our inner solar system. This means that the sun traversing brown dwarf star has probably not been here for very long because it's still dark, 
i.e. the star does not emit in any visible light. But that oval-shaped star in figure 7 has probably been here for quite a few years. In conclusion, the images I have analyzed seem to show that there is possibly a number of brown dwarf stars in our inner solar system, and that some of these stars may have been here for quite a long time, whilst others seem to be new arrivals. This may also mean that more of these brown dwarf stars may still arrive, with each having an additional energy draining effect on our sun. Thank you again for subscribing and watching my presentation today. Chris Potter of Physicist Thoughts. Take care. And me very interesting questions for me to think about. In the article entitled Brown Dwarf Star Traverses the Sun from March 17, 2017, I clearly show that the object which traverses the sun on February 25, 2007 is nearly twice the size of Jupiter and is a brown dwarf star. Figure 1 below shows a close-up view of this object from a Stereo B Core 2 image. The image is from February 20, 2007, at which time the object was approaching the sun. The object is dark and therefore does not emit any visible light. But the cloud surrounding the object is emitting light and looks pink on the object's right-hand side. Now, from the cloud of ionized gas surrounding the star. Now, after making its loop around the sun, it makes a pass. Let's try that again. After making its loop around the sun and making its pass through the sun's corona, the brown dwarf star moves away from the sun and appears in the HI1-B visible light images on February 27th. 2007. The brown dwarf star's appearance and motion is detailed in figure 2 below. Now, this suggests that the cloud surrounding the object is ionized gas and that light emission comes from plasma discharges across the cloud. A dark object of this size surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas has to be a brown dwarf star. Since the object is clearly a brown dwarf star, I will call it BDISS200701 where BDISS stands for Brown Dwarf Inner Solar System, comma 2007, to the year in which it was first observed in the Inner Solar System and 01, excuse me. Let's do this again. Since this object is clearly a brown... Good afternoon, it's Chris Potter. Today I have a new presentation for you that I'd like to share. Brown Dwarf Star System in the Inner Solar System, The Evidence, Part 4, A Physicist's Thoughts, dated March 18, 2017. Let us begin. The series of articles I have written in answer to questions sent to me regarding the various images used throughout the articles. I have analyzed these images at people's request and have written my thoughts on it. In this fourth part, I try to put all the thoughts I have expressed in an answer to these questions together. I would also like to thank all the people who sent Brown Dwarf Star. I will call it BDISS 2701, where BDISS stands for Brown Dwarf Inner Solar System. Comma 2007, which refers to the year in which it was first observed in the inner solar system. And quote unquote 01 refers to it being the first clearly identified brown dwarf star in the inner solar system. Figure 1. Close up of brown dwarf star BDISS 2701 and a Core 2B image from February 20th, 2007 at 903, showing that it is a dark object surrounded by a cloud of ionized gas. 
plasma discharges in this cloud lead to light emission.